Greetings and welcome fellow YouTubers to my video this time on the subject of emptiness and the uh, the Buddhist concept of emptiness which is shunyata the Sanskrit word shunyata which means emptiness is the concept is very much much misunderstood and um, often confused for other things so what am I going to do in this video? I'm going to tell you about emptiness, what it is, so you can understand. Um, give you some uh, examples of how things are empty. Some very simple examples and moving on to some more complex examples. I'm also going to mention about the emptiness of the self, which is the realisation of no, no inherent self. And finally I shall end up with how emptiness itself is empty and how you can understand it for yourself. Hopefully that'll be interesting for you. Okay, <clears throat> right. <clears throat> emptiness. <clears throat> First off I'll start and cover what it is not. So in case you come into this video with a particular idea about oh what, what, that, that's emptiness, it might be something that it's not. So what it's not is the following. <clears throat> it's not anything to do with a feeling. People say, oh, empty, empty feeling, like, oh, I'm empty, I feel emptiness. Oh, oh. No, nothing to do with the feeling. <coughs> it's not showing that something does not exist at all. No, it's not that either. It's not anything in relation to the opposite of full. For example, you might say, <coughs> is this glass half full or half empty? It's not that sort of empty. So, what is emptiness? Okay. Emptiness is the quality of all things. All things at, of their nature are empty. Okay, what does that mean? All things do not have inherent existence. They do not exist of themselves. All things are dependent. All things are dependent on something else. And in order to show that something is empty, all you need to show is that it is, its existence is dependent on something else. Let us begin with some examples to hopefully fully make you understand what emptiness is and how something can be shown to be empty. So, first example, a piece of paper. Ah, there we are. <laughs> the wonders of modern technology. <clears throat> so, the existence of this piece of paper. How is this piece of paper empty of its own inherent existence? Well, what is required for this piece of paper to exist? Well, first of all, in order for this piece of paper to exist here anyway, I would have had to have bought it from somewhere or somebody must have given me it. Okay, but in order for this, let's think about, think about it, this a little bit deeper. In order for any piece of paper to exist, it would have to be manufactured, it would have to be created, so straight away it depends on being created. Then you could say well it's actually originally manufactured from sort of a, like a wood pulp that's crushed down to make paper, so it's dependent on the manufacturing process itself. And then that manufacturing process is dependent on the supply of trees and the supply of wood. And the supply of wood is dependent on trees growing and trees growing requires forestry, it requires the trees require nurturing, it requires people to look after the trees and people to cut them down. So the tree itself is dependent, in order for a tree to grow the tree must be dependent on light, water, some sort of adequate heating, even a place to actually grow. So the tree is dependent on all those factors <clears throat> and also that the tree is dependent on the atmosphere so it can, it can take in carbon dioxide and give out oxygen. It requires um, root, a soil at the earth in order to bury its roots down. So you could even go say that the tree requires the atmosphere and the earth itself and the sun. You, it requires all those things. Okay well what does the Earth and the Earth's atmosphere and the Sun depend on? Well they depend on the solar system which is the solar system is a place where these items are 
kept, are stored. You know, the sun and the earth are, are part of the solar system. That's where they are. Without, without the solar system, then we wouldn't know the sun and the earth. And what's the solar system dependent on? Well, the, the, the galaxy, because the solar system is, is in, it's part of the galaxy. Without a galaxy where it can be located in, there would be no solar system. And what's the galaxy dependent on? The entire universe. So, in order for this piece of paper to be here right now, there has to be the universe. Now, there was a famous Carl Sagan, as an American scientist, and uh, he, I think, he grasped this concept because one of his famous quotes, which again, people struggle to understand, one of his famous quotes is something like this. In order to bake the perfect apple pie, first of all, you must create a universe. And that is it. He must have seen that apple pie, in order for an apple pie to be, then requires a universe. Anyway, from that, you've got the idea that this particular piece of paper, in order for its existence, requires a lot of things. OK, well, that's existence of a piece of paper. Let's look at something else. A cup. Ha ha! Ha ha! Paul Daniels, eat your heart out. OK, a cup. This is my cup I drink my coffee out of. As you can see, it's uh, highly decorative. Uh, lots of cats, random cats uh, pictures. Uh, generally a white cup made of fine porcelain, so it says. OK, well, let's consider the colour of this cup. <clears throat> now, mostly you'll say that's kind of white. Most of it is white, apart from the patterns. So we can say, well, it's mostly a white cup. OK, although if we're being a little more exact, it's not exactly white. It's more of a kind of off-white colour, more of a creamy sort of colour. Well, let's consider the colour of the cup. Let's see if the colour of the cup is dependent, and hence the colour of the cup is empty. OK. Well, at the moment it appears this, this particular colour. OK. Now, if it was under a really bright light, no doubt the white would also appear really bright, so it would be incredibly white. And it wouldn't look quite like this. Let's say it was, um, it was going dark outside and the lights were going down. No doubt the cup would be much, much darker. In fact, if it was really dark or the lights were off, the cup might even, might even look grey. In fact, if the lights were almost totally off, the cup might end up just looking black. The colour of the cup is dependent on the light falling on it. In fact, if we see the colour of the cup right now, you're seeing through this video, <clears throat> I can adjust the settings on my camera, the white balance, to make this look a different shade. So the colour of the cup is also dependent on the settings of the video camera. OK. Well, what does that really mean then? Normally, we consider the cup has a colour white. But we've seen that the cup does not have its own inherent colour, because the colour is dependent. It's dependent on many factors. One of the main ones I, I described is the light. Oh, hmm. <laughs> Off you pop. OK, let's consider something else. Let's consider taste. Now in, in the UK, we have something called Marmite, which I think in other countries, particularly as I know in Australia, it's called Vegemite, which is some sort of yeast extract, I think. And um, a lot of people really like it and a lot of people really hate it. And uh, no doubt there's, there's other people who think, well, take it or leave it. They're kind of, you know, on the level. But if we think about the taste of Marmite, does the taste of Marmite have its own inherent taste? Clearly not. The taste of Marmite depends on people's taste. It has to, because some people like it and some people don't. So therefore we can see that the taste of Marmite 
is empty. The taste of Marmite is dependent. And another more complex example is if we can show something is dependent on its parts, that way we can show it is empty. So let's consider a university. Okay, What is a university? Is it its building? A building for the university? Yes. Uh, the lecturers? Yes, they're also a part of the university. The students? Yes, they're also part of the university. The shareholders, the people who bring income, yes, they're also part of the university. So there's lots of parts. And, and there's probably many more I, I can't think of off the top of my head. Lots and lots of parts that go up to the university. But can we find an inherently existing university as a thing? No. We can find all parts, but we never find a university. So, because we can show it, the university is dependent, it's dependent on lots of parts, we can show that there is no inherently existing university. The university is empty. Two further things I can talk about, and that's the emptiness of the self. Now, I can't give you a full running commentary about that here. I'm going to do an entire separate video on realizing, realizing the, the emptiness of the self, realizing that there is no inherent self. But I can talk about why it's tr a little tricky to do here. When we've considered the things so far, we've considered the paper, the cup, uh, university, Marmite, <clears throat> and we've done all those as a kind of mental exercise. So when I've, when I've been talking to you, <clears throat> On this video, in this video, you've been thinking about what I've been saying and you've kind of been working it through in your own mind and hopefully you agree with what I'm saying and mentally it makes sense to you. Fine. The problem though with realising the emptiness of the self is in order to do that we show that it is dependent on thought and men the mental faculties themselves. That is why it's tricky to see through. Something else has to be used as a kind of stopgap so we can look at that. And the usual comparison that we do, which I'll show in another video, so if this interests you, have a look at my other videos and I'll show this, and that's comparing the thoughts with the experience that we find in the moment and comparing those two and seeing how they compare. And that will give you the realisation and show you that the self is empty. But I have no doubt many of you intelligent people out there, and hey, if you're watching this video and you've subscribed to my channel, you must be really clever. You're probably saying to yourself, hey, Mr Buddhist Sympathiser, you've said that everything is empty. OK, absolutely everything. Well, what about emptiness itself? Is that empty too? Well, I'm glad you asked. And the answer is yes. Emptiness itself is also empty. It's not something you can land on as a final answer because it is itself is empty. And we can consider that. Emptiness, like I've been saying, is a way of considering things. And, the way, and a way of considering things isn't something that has inherent existence. It's a concept, an idea. It can't be found as an inherently existing thing. So there we are. Emptiness. Shunyata, as the Buddhist Sanskrit word says. Hope you found that interesting. Hope you've learned something from that. Hope you've grasped what I've said. If you haven't, if you're thinking, oh, it doesn't make sense, I oh, don't understand what you're talking about, or something, leave a comment down below, give a question, I'll address it, click like, click subscribe, do all those wonderful things that YouTubers often do with videos and some people that they like, and I'll catch you in the next video. See you soon. Bye for now.